First of all, the Washington Post, the uh, the gossip columnist Roxanne Roberts, R- and reliable Amy source, Arnstein, right? Reliable source. They were so horrible to us the whole time. Just. Um, you know, making us a joke, basically, mm-hmm. and asking, like, asking the the, the audience, who, who are these women? Like, what do they matter to DC? Basically, um, it wasn't nice at all. And then, um, you know, there was a there was a lot of controversy, of course, around the show even airing. There was a right. lot of people that protested it. Were like, no, I'm not watching that garbage. Like, so anyone DC. who would do that, yeah. Um, I had. I had neighbors that weren't very nice to me um, mm-hmm. because of it, and um, you know, it was something I had to just grow some thick skin and yeah. not roll off my shoulders. But um, because I think I think what we did was was a, a great snapshot of DC, and I think so too. Um, a, a nice time capsule. I want to gab. Okay, today we're gabbing with Mary Schmidt Amons of The Real Housewives of DC, a one season wonder that finally got added to Peacock. Mary has been friendly with my mom over the years. We kind of reconnected at Dave Quinn's book party a couple of years ago in New York City. And now we're finally doing an interview. And I'm actually, I'm glad we waited till right now because again, DC is ready to stream for the first time, I think ever. So um, Mary with DC back in the air with Real Housewives of DC back in the zeitgeist a little bit. It's lovely to have Mm -hmm. you on. How are you? Thank you, Gibson, so much. I'm doing great. Um, I I just wanted to say that last night, last night, let's just jump into last night. Um, Yeah. um, Last night was um, a book talk. Andy Andy came to town and um, and had a book talk about his new book, The, the Daddy Diaries, um, which looks very sweet um, and interesting. Um, I, I can't wait to read it. But um, we were talking backstage with him and he is so excited about the response. Um, Good. And he introduced us in, in um, his intro last night as the top streaming show on Peacock right now. There we go. I love that. That's that's like, wild. What? That's <laughs> wild. How many years later? Like 14? 15. 15 years so, later. Almost 15. Wow. No, 14. 14. So we were we aired um August 5th. We launched August 5th, 2010. So it's 14. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's... We we filmed 15 years ago. Right. Well, that's quite yeah. the full circle moment to, you know, have the DC book event that he was doing come right after. DC being put on streaming and then you and Linda being able to go there and be backstage with him and connect in that way. I mean, Andy, I mean, even since it's been put on Peacock, Andy's been a proponent of like, I wanted justice for DC. I wanted a second season. So it's, that's a pretty cool feeling. It must feel pretty nice. It feels great. Um, And also he, he touched on that a little bit last night because people, people want to know what happened. People want to know why we didn't go forward. Right. And, and he's made it pretty clear that, um, literally, when your when your footage is subpoenaed by the FBI, you have a problem. Your hands <laughs> are tied. Right. But I mean, he he really was pushing for us to even um, recast without Mikkel um, and keep going. He said that in another interview that I saw with him when he was in his New York book talk. Mm-hmm. Um, someone was asking about um, a reboot for DC, and that is like the hugest response right now. Totally. Yeah. Everyone wants to see us back on TV and they want to see us now, like 15 years later. <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> which I it's amazing. <laughs> which I also think that like, I think people watching that season for the first time or for the first time in 15 years, which is sort of the case with me. It's like, you're reminded that it was, yeah, I guess like in the national consciousness, it was overshadowed by what happened, but like, it's a really solid season of housewives overall. And it's not all about it that. Is. You know what I mean? It is. And um, the overarching uh, comment about our season is that we were before our time. Like we were ahead oh, of our yeah. time. Oh yeah. And I'm going to get into that because there's, a, I think yeah. in several ways you were ahead of your time. Yes. I really yeah. think that. I mean, maybe that's why also it didn't work. I mean, you know, right. we, we had an epic event happen that, you know, you could have never made up or <laughs> predicted. Nope. Um, but, you know, I've, I've really come to terms with, um, where everything ended up and how it's it's 
an okay that we didn't go forward. And I'm actually delighted that we're considered classics. Yeah, now. totally. I, I think that's a good, like, that's not, not that's a bad a place classy, to be. That's a classic place to be. I, I'm good with it. A hundred percent. you know, yeah. And Gibson, you know, I don't know, um, you know, cause these shows are, are full of all kinds of editing and drama. I, I'm, I was worried about going forward actually. And I did tell my, my family and my dad specifically when I, when I talked everybody into that, this was going to be a, an okay thing for us to do as a family, um, that I had a choice that if yeah. it really was a disaster, then I would, I would not go forward with it. But also in my pitch to my family and my dad specifically, and he's an entertainment lawyer. Um, and he was very concerned about, uh, the risk and the exposure it was going to put our family in. Um, he basically said, or I said to him that reality shows hadn't worked out in the past. There were several that, that didn't work out. Like, um, uh, what's the one, the MTV one, um, there was an, uh, it was, it was where everyone lives in one house. Oh, like real world, real world DC. Real world. Yeah. Real yeah, yeah. world DC. That really was, wasn't a good one. Yeah. And then there was another one that Rob Lowe was trying to do. Right. Um, so I, I just said, dad, I, I think this is a one hit wonder and it's an opportunity to, to expose my charity work and mm -hmm. build some sort of platform from myself and, you know, my design business and all of that. So, um, it worked out the way it should. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm glad yeah. that you found peace with that, I think. Um, yeah. So, okay. So Mary, let's go back to that time, to, to the beginning. Yeah. I First of all, I loved what, you know, again, in this rewatch, it's like just as, as a cast member on the show, I loved what you, what you brought to it. It was, you had this great house in the suburbs of DC. You had a... Uh, you know, a finger, uh, a fingerprint scanner on your closet door to keep your daughter out. You have five kids, you had this like great family life and you just brought some humor, but also I think some levity to everything, kind of a balance of that. How did, what was the casting like for the show? How did you find yourself on the Real Housewives of DC cast? Well, it's something, uh, it's very sneaky, the process. It's very sneaky. What they do is they have, um, uh, casting producers, uh, what they did is they went to some of the PR firms in town that do events and know who people are in the social circles. Uh -huh. And, um, and my name was put forward by some people that thought that I would be good for it and would consider it. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it was really because, you know, I was doing a lot of charity work. I was socially prominent. Um, I'm a DC native. And my grandfather was one of the pioneers of radio and television. So I had that in my, in my back pocket and, um, and uh, I was open to do it. Right. So, and then, you know, they, they, they had a whole list of people that were considering. In fact, I was thinking about this today, Gibson. I was like, your mom, dad would have been great. On <laughs> I think they would have been great TV. I doubt they would have ever, ever done it, but like, I think no, they would have been, been great TV. You would have been great on it too. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> yeah, this so fun. But anyway, um, yeah. So the casting process um, was a series of, of, of uh, conversations interviews. and uh -huh. interviews uh, and they wouldn't tell us what it was. And it was basically like, I think they called it Inside Washington was the name of the show they were casting. Got it. And, and I, and I kept asking questions, very specific questions, like housewives questions. Uh huh. Good. <laughs> um, and, I'm, and, you know, I would do a lot of eye rolling with this casting agent and, um, and she just couldn't say what it was. In fact, we didn't have those words written in writing until we got our contracts presented. Wow. So they never even told us that it was Real Housewives Bravo TV until they presented us with contracts. That's pretty wild until you were sent yeah. like all, pretty much locked in. Right. And so yes. who did who did you I know that like you had you and Linda knew each other. You had you had met Mikhail like years ago. Who else yes. did, did you know everybody or did you meet kind of Stacy and Kat through the show? Well no, I, I had I had met both Stacy and Kat um, not too not too long before the show. Um, okay. 
as you know from the show, you can see that I'm friends with Erica, who is Stacy's good friend. Right. So I had heard through the grapevine through Erica that um, that Stacy was being cast. So we got together and and um, talked about things, and mm -hmm. uh, we shared a lawyer. Got I got I got everybody lawyered up. Uh, <laughs> I love that for you. Um, and then um, Kat, I. I met her before we started filming um, just because I, I had heard that she, they were talking to her too and right. she wanted to meet me um, uh -huh. and Linda and we just hit it off. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And I, I think, um, I, I think we had, I think we had a really good opening season showing that we actually knew someone of each other. I agree. And had familiar it's ties and, yeah. Yes. Yes. I, I, because I, I, a lot, of, a lot of the other shows, some of these women have no idea totally who each other no, are. You know, I think the the organic connection is really important, especially for a first season. And like even yeah. with with everything that went down with Mikhail and, and Tarek, like you were somebody who could vouch for like what they used to be like or what she used to be like. And I think that, that was like really good context for everything that happened. You know what I mean? And like Well, that ended up being the major part of what we were talking about from day one. Right. Is it like like episode one was what do we think about these people? And that was not that was not what we were talking about when we first started filming. Right. Necessarily all of that. They they I think what happened is the White House. So the timing was we started filming in mid September. The White House incident happened the week of Thanksgiving. Okay. Wednesday before Thanksgiving, and uh, or it was announced. It was Tuesday and Wednesday morning. The news hit. The news came out. This had happened. Yes. And, um, and so I think what happened is they had to go re-edit the whole show because they had already started to edit the show. I'm sure. And we did, we thought we were going to be airing sooner than August. We thought we were going to be airing in the spring, launching in the spring. Um, but I think it threw everything it off. took her time. And yeah. Yeah. Well, we went dark. Actually, we went dark for six weeks. Yeah. Well we were just about finished filming. Wow. Yeah. Well, that, that right. was, that was, that's my question that I was going to ask later, but like, so, you know, the finale of the season before the reunion is the crashing episode where yes. they crash and then it cuts to a couple months later where, you know, we see you guys watching them on C-SPAN and, 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 and I, and I was yeah. going to say that what, one of the ways in which I think that whole thing is a little bit ahead of its time in the housewives realm is like, now it's not that uncommon for them to pick cameras back up if something really big happens in their cast, whether mm -hmm. it was on Vanderpump Rules or with Kyle on Beverly Hills. Like they are doing that more often. And yeah. it felt like they did that kind of for the first time with you guys. They did. Um, and also the other thing that's interesting to to observe when when you're watching it um, is how, how our pickup interviews are all over the place as far as what we look like oh <laughs> really i didn't pick up on that if you could if you could tell, like the the, the the real indication is like my hair what my hair looks like and my hair went from like being this like voluminous brunette-ish like hair to like almost white blonde and i mean so it funny. was all over the place and the pickup interviews are 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 not consistent right like they, because we had to go back and do do interviews, huh. uh, pick up interviews after right. everything was over, right. and talk about what right. they wanted. Right, exactly. We had to re-edit the we had to re-edit the show. Right, right. So, so, so I alluded to this, but you said several times throughout the season that you had known Mikhail when she sold you makeup at Nordstrom in the nineties. Yeah, when and you I, and they edited that, I want to I want to I want to just confirm that. They edit that. That edit is so snarky, and I they brought did not it in all the time. It. Oh no, yeah, they. I believe that they. They brought in a bite of me making a a face that did not uh, match. I believe that my words, my word. I wouldn't say she was my makeup artist. Yeah, exactly. You know? and, exactly. And, and and say like, Haha, like <laughs> no, I would never. And I got so much flack from that from from people that watched it saying that I was undermining makeup artists the profession and i'm like oh, no, no no that no a, that was an unfair edit <laughs> no i no i and, I and i kind of i and just knowing you and ha what you're like it's like i didn't really i didn't read it that way but i but i was yeah. curious like for you you know you knew who, who she was a life that she had years before the show started when you guys started filming all together 
were you like, like, who is this? Is, is this the same person? Well, I didn't know her that well. I mean, literally, she she was like the bubbly blonde that was at you know or Nordstrom and Tyson's Corner. It, yeah. it, they had the, that counter was at the entrance to the mall. Got it. So she was literally at the front and center, and she would be out like roaming around asking people if they would want to come get their <laughs> makeup done because she was just so full of this personality and yeah. this energy. And I don't say that critically. Like she she was great, and she was yeah. a great makeup artist. She was great at it. Um, and she was at Trish McAvoy, right in the front, right in the front of Nordstrom. But, um, you know, that's all, that's all I really knew of her. And then I would see her out and about. Got it. Um, like I remember going to a concert at Wolf Trap once and seeing them. And I was with, it was like a girl's night out. I can't remember who we were seeing. Um, I think it was Chris Isaac or something. And, um, they pulled up into that horseshoe that where the where you get out and you the ticket counter there and they were in their limousine the white limousine, one and they had okay. a whole entourage of people and they walked in and they were like down front and center and they like went up to the to the stage and were acting like they were all friendly with the, the band and oh you know, yeah like backstage and all of that and i just remember seeing them in those kinds of scenarios where they were just kind of grifting their <laughs> right <laughs> so so you also, so you got the you got you got the waft a little bit before yes, before the I show did, i did i did okay. and also i have a friend who went to high school with her um and she went by the name of missy in high school wow yeah wow and then and then because because linda said she knew her as michaela and then you said you knew her yeah. as michelle and then she was known as missy so she's gone by a lot of different formations of her she's, name yeah and i remember as michaela too back right when back when she was Got it. Mushroom. She huh. was Michaela. Huh. There was an A on there. <laughs> well, and, and the, the 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 wolf trap story is actually really interesting because one of my questions for you, Mary, was sort of like again being adjacent to all of this, and it wasn't just the White House thing. They crashed the black the Congressional Black Caucus dinner. There was they were always in that white limo. The whole thing with the winery was super sketchy. Um, she said she was a lobbyist and also a Redskins cheerleader. Um, at, at the reunion, she comes in and says she has MS with no proof of that. And you guys open the question that because, and you called them social climbers. I kind of feel like they're way more than that. They are kind of grifters and things. But my question was like, how much of it was for the show? Because they had a network of cameras around them, but it sounds like they were doing this kind of behavior before the show even started. Oh, long before, long before. Yeah. And the other thing is, um, it was it was disturbing that they were they were very disruptive to our our production team like they would cancel last minute uh -oh. and you know these people are paid union on union scale and yeah. they're paid for a certain chunk of time that is scheduled and you know organizing five women and all these cameras and sound people and equipment and and locations shots and all of this was was a puzzle that these yeah. producers had to keep going and they would constantly disrupt and and cancel and you know they would call me last minute and be like hey we have the crew uh can we come over and w we'd like to you know get you like right in your kitchen so you, you had to pick up the slack that they, yeah. you had to pick up the slack basically yeah, yeah. ah yes. so 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 yeah. wild so did you and get they never knew they never knew where they were like they, it's <laughs> Of course, that's not surprising yeah. to me. <laughs> because that house that, that they showcased was not theirs. Right. And they were always um, living out of like the Four Seasons and Georgetown and things like that. Like, uh -huh. I, yeah. I can't even imagine trying trying to wrangle them. Um, yeah. Last question about them before we move on to the rest of the show. Yeah. How much, look, I guess in hindsight, how much of that whole, their whole kind of thing do you attribute to him and just him is sort of like brainwashing her or both of them together. Cause it's, it's hard to read as a viewer. Yeah. Well, it was hard to read as someone who was right there. Right. <laughs> also, um, we did have conversations. Linda and I did have conversations where we were concerned about her and wondering whether she was in some, some sort of. Yeah. Unhealthy trans. relationship. I don't know. Yeah, Unhealthy yeah. relationship. Um, yeah, there was that concern. And I, I you know, that's all speculative. Of um, course. But uh, she it's sure did tell. act like a sidekick. 
it was definitely, you know, Linda's line of Bonnie and Clyde. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rang true. Yeah, for sure. For and sure. Also, he never he never would let her alone. Like yeah. rarely were we able to film with just her. Like she would never showed up alone. She would he was always right there. Very telling. Managing. Yeah. Yeah. So um, was- Yeah. Mary, one of the other things that I really liked about the show, not kind of getting off that topic, is mm-hmm. I loved how much the gay guys in your life were involved in this show. There was Ted Gibson and his husband. There was Paul Wharton, who was like really in the mix. I mean, he had several yeah. parties thrown for him and and he was kind of in the yeah. drama. And um, they were basically like kind of official friends of the cast, it felt like kind of in terms of how, how much they were around. What was for that sure. like at the time? Because it kind of... Atlanta was doing a similar thing at that time. They had a, a, some gay guys in the mix, just kind of like in the drama. But um, that was kind of a rarity too in in the Housewives yeah. world. Yes, yeah. so fun. The story of um, Jason and Ted. Um, actually, it was very serendipitous. Um, I had just been introduced to Ted. He he had just opened his salon in DC, and mm-hmm. um, and and the girl, the manager of the salon. Um, asked for me and my 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 team of sisters and daughters to be models to train their staff when they first opened amazing and that day that jason was doing my color this is, this is when um this is even before i th- i was sitting in his chair and got an email from the casting the casting girl that that wanted to have lunch with me about possibly being on a reality show. And I was wow. literally, I had my phone in my hand, oils all in my hair. And I looked at Jason. I was like, oh, my. I just got chills, actually. I was like, oh, my. That's wild. He looked at it. We were giggling hysterically. He's like, it has to be housewives. Mary, you're doing this. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. You're coming with me. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Like if you if if I'm doing it, you're doing it. And he's like, we're in. Done. And like it was perfect. And and I literally organically was helping them help, you know, get the word out about their salon and and the fact that Ted Gibson, this world renowned yeah, celebrity God, hairstylist, was coming to town. Um and uh anyway, so it just it worked perfectly with our with our storylines and um and uh, I love how they weave, the, they wove them. <laughs> me too. No, me and too. And Jason and I, literally, the minute we met, we were like giggling hysterically, just like, so, "Where have you been on my?" Life? Yeah, no, that's that. That bond is great. I really love that. And like, yeah. and but they were also really kind of integral to the show too, because that's how some of the information got passed around. Kind of because I think. Mm-hmm. Mikhail would kind of like claim to be better friends with them than she probably was, you know, and that that kind of stuff would happen. So I think it was, they were important for the show too, in in that way, just like functionally. Yes. And I think they were kind of playing along with her game. Yeah. Setting up. Entertaining at first. Right. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, And then the other thing, Mary, that I, that gets into like another thing that I think made this show distinctly DC is that, some of the conversations that you guys were having were a little bit more serious, you know, like for example, like there was that whole moment about you went to um, meet with a local politician about the legalization of gay marriage. And there was a very kind of open discussion about that. And I think it reflects very much the time that the show was filmed probably, but like, so in that way, it's a time capsule, but this kind of conversation was not happening on other housewife shows. And I don't think that it would happen on other housewife shows. It's very, it's very of DC, you know? Yeah. Well, I think they were stretching to include politics yeah. in, in our storylines. And um, and it definitely was a very important, of course. important moment in history. Um, and, you know, I think that it was it was a perfect platform given the network and Andy and, and his, you know, his, you know, mm-hmm. it's Andy. Yeah. <laughs> he made it yeah. happen. And um, it was very, it was very informative. Um, it was kind of sprung on us mm. um and i think it was something that was um paul's paul's, paul's yeah paul's he brought you guys he brought you guys to that yeah producers yeah um and i think it was i think it was a poignant moment in the whole in the whole season um because it 
it opened the conversation and educated us. It educated me. Yeah. Yeah. I thought, I thought, I thought that conversation with your daughter. Yeah. No, I, but I, but I think that's why I say, I think it's kind of a reflection of the time, but I also think that like that conversation, that kind of follow-up conversation that you have with your daughter was really great. Cause I think it was also kind of like her from a different generation, kind of just like speaking really frankly to you and you getting it right away. And it like, I just think that was a really nice moment. It really was. Gibson, I I consider I, the the burn that I got and that that comment in the car about Mikkel. Yeah, they gave me a gift and they they gave me an opportunity to recover from that because I said something to them that I was really upset with myself. Literally, I I said to them as soon as those words hit hit out of my mouth, right, flew out of my mouth. I was like, I want I wanted slow motion to just go. No, right. I don't, I, that's not what I meant. That's yeah, what I meant. totally. Um, so they gave me they gave me an opportunity to recover and and um, get that cleared up. Yeah, that's re- that's right. really nice. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah. Um, and I think the other another way that the show was kind of ahead of its time was the conversation around race. I mean, like race was not talked about on other Housewives yeah. shows and other reality shows. Not, not much in the zeitgeist yeah. at all, I would say, because, you know, Obama had just become president. And I think the the prevailing mentality was that we were kind of like in a post-racist society and like we had a black president now. And and I think we all, mm-hmm. we now know that that's not the case, obviously. But like, I think, yeah. again, I think those conversations around race at the time, like it's it, it, it was very reflective of that moment in our, in our country. And yeah. we were seeing it on TV and you know, Stacey was was a black woman on a on a majority white cast, which was again not something that was yeah. happening a lot. And I just think it was, again, it was just sort of, it's one of those things where DC was doing it before. I think some of the other franchises kind of started to do that yeah. and talk about that. Yeah. Well, again, I think it was another another reach for creating some conversation and some yeah. drama in, yeah. inside the cast. I mean. I, you know, it's unfortunate the way Kat was spun into having some sort of racist view, um, right. which was absolutely false. Um, and that was one of the things that was most upsetting to her through the through yeah, the editing, that makes sense. Is that is that that is not at all who she is or what she what she believes? And um, you know, the scene where we were at Aunt Frances's house, that was. That was a real unfortunate day actually in her life where she had had some major altercation at home with Charles mm. and um, they had invited us to this, to this party, you know, with cameras and they had us all arriving at different times, like specifically they tend for to a do reason. That. Yeah. Yeah. So they had Kat go there first. To be the so only she one. Was uncomfortable. Right. And she was uncomfortable because she had had a, a major blowout blow at home. At home. Yeah. yeah. And um, she was very upset. She, you know, she let us know before we got there that she was having a really hard day. And so um, they had us come in like an hour or so later. Wow. So she That's was there just yeah. like lingering around. Right. Awkward. And then, she, you know, she, they served her some wine that obviously wasn't good. And she didn't handle that very well. But. Um, yeah, that was an unfortunate moment for her. Um, and we all knew it too. Like, we yeah, felt it. you, you, could you feel can the kind setup. of see it. There's a heaviness in that yeah. scene. Yeah. And then there's that weird scene downstairs with the men. Like, right, the right, <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Yeah. I think that like, I would say that like, that right. comment. <laughs> I would say that like <laughs> some of the editing of the show is all is like a little dated, I guess, or just like a reflection of where reality TV was at the time. It was let it was less fluid and less like kind of. Um, I think they were still figuring choppy. out. Yeah, it was choppy. Yeah, it was choppy, and also, um, if you think about it, Beverly Hills came off our heels, and they had a, like, I don't know what their production budget was, but it was way <laughs> way more than I ours. believe that. Yeah, because the production quality of our show. It's pretty low, actually, if you right. if you examine it, and if you look at you know the production quality of everything else these days. But specifically, there was a huge contrast when when we finished and Beverly Hills started. I mean, it was like glitzy. The 
you know, the outtakes and the B-roll, they were just like, you know, yeah, drones and, you know. Right, right, <laughs> totally. Yeah. And the, yeah, totally. It's like it was very reflection of L.A., but yeah. yeah. Um, I, I mean, I thought that I, I thought that Kat and I thought that Linda were also two amazing personalities to round out the cast. I mean, Linda is like such a sharpshooter and like she has all these great one liners. She's this she had this like hot young boyfriend, lived in Georgetown, ran a modeling agency. And then you have Kat who kind of brought this like really kind of brutal dry humor sometimes, which yeah, I think yeah. made me laugh a lot. And she had like true proximity to political power through her husband who was a white house photographer yeah. so like i thought those were i mean linda and cat were great people on the cast as well like yeah. i think everybody on the cast really served a purpose and brought something to the yeah. table i think we were cast well yeah um yeah I, I i i'm not sure how who we could have replaced michelle with i mean and, and i think that was another thing is how do you how do you fix that how do you how do you match that <laughs> right. Yeah. How do you match that? I'm going crazy. But I but I think that like no. I mean I I think that like I think there is kind of uh there's a benefit of having sort of like a a common enemy like a shared enemy in in reality TV sense of the word. But I do think that like if you guys had been brought back for another season, you could have had like a more classic housewife season. You know what I mean? If you would if if if, if they didn't come back, you kept the other four women added one or two uh, two more women probably who would we, like we would have needed slightly two, I think. yeah 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 but i think that like there you guys had so much potential as a cast but um you know i got it got overshadowed obviously i know and and gibson i don't know if you know this but there was uh supposed to be a sixth housewife and the day that we started filming she declined who was it her contract um lisa spees okay is her name um she was a political consultant and um, I think that what happened is um, a couple of her clients said they wouldn't work with her if she was going to do that. So she decided to keep her day yeah. job. <laughs> that, that's not that's not surprising uh, from D.C., I would I would yeah. say. But OK, so th that there would have been another personality in the mix, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And we, uh, Rich and I had dinner with them. Charlie, her husband's Charlie. Um once and just discussed, you know, the options and the opportunities and also got her on board with our lawyer mm -hmm. um, and uh, to negotiate our contract all together, basically. And um, they were super fun. And I think she would have been great, but she just couldn't do it. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So again, the, the season ends with with the crashing and I, and I, I wonder from your perspective, again, as a co-star, when this was happening, did you immediately, when did you start to sense that it was going to affect the entire show? And, and was it because the cameras went down? Was it because you got the news alert in the morning? Was it, what, when did that first kind of hit you that like, oh, like we might be a little fucked here? Yeah, that's exactly right. You nailed it. Um, the morning, I, I got the news first, uh, Wednesday morning. I, I just. I think I just turned the TV on and I saw the Salahis walking through the White House press gallery uh -huh. and seeing the news. And I called Linda immediately and I was like, turn on your TV. Right. Houston, we have a problem. And we, just, we were aghast. We were like, we could not believe it. We, we felt like we were in some sort of dream sequence. <laughs> um, and, you know, she's, she, uh, she put her thinking cap on and she's like, you know what? This could actually really shut down our show. Right. They might not, they might not do this now. Right. Ah. Like that was an option. It, it, the show is never guaranteed to air. Right. Totally. They don't, they tell you when, when they're shooting it, that it's a pilot basically. Ah, got it. Um, and that it's, it's, you know, they'll let you know if it's green lit or not. But mm -hmm. We're going forward with production mm -hmm. and Bravo's behind it, but it wasn't a guarantee yeah. until they let us know it was happening. Right. Um, so we ha we felt like maybe that all that time was wasted and we were done and it wasn't going to air at all. But um, yeah, it was a moment. Yeah, I'm sure. And then we were dark. We were dark for six weeks. Right. So we we went through. We were supposed to be wrapping. Was there a finale um, planned, like a big party or something? 
Francisco. The guy. Oh, Mary, no. Yes. My fucking show. I'm so sorry. That's so, uh, that's so annoying. Yes. And I spent so much time and had all of these amazing sponsorships, like Renaissance brand mm. basically opened the door to the Mayflower Hotel. And we had a beautiful fashion show with Layla Rose. Uh. Um, Ted Gibson came and did the hair. I'm it sure Linda did Linda's, the models. Linda's models. Yeah. It was, and we had scenes where Linda and I were casting the models for the show um, in like a big banquet hall in the, in the Mayflower. And um, yeah, there was a lot of, there were a lot of scenes that were, that were right. leading up to that as the finale. And that's right. my, my understanding was that show was going to end our season. And um the the call I got the day before the finale aired was from our executive producers to let me know that I was not going to be the finale. My fashion show was not going to be the finale. That we they had to they had to do the White House mm-hmm. scene. Yeah, and so they edited my entire fashion show out, even all the storylines that I you know months and months and months of of filming scenes leading up to that, of me planning it, what was going into it, who was involved, mm. Leela Rose. It was fabulous. I mean, but, if they're not going to give us, if they're not going to give us another season, they can at least do a recut finale. That would have been <laughs> the, the, the original. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Um, so so there, there are photographs of me from that evening and I'm in a, I'm in a magenta dress. And my hair was done by Ted. And there were even scenes up in, uh, we had the presidential suite of the Mayflower Hotel. I mean, it was a magical, uh-huh. magical day. Yeah. Um, where Ted's doing my hair and he had all these beautiful extensions all in them. And it was, I had this like, love it. Uh, Jessica Rabbit wave. And it was just it a was true amazing. finale look. A true finale it was a look. True finale. Like, and we had a seven repeat and we had, I was just, it was so fabulous. Yeah. Um, uh, but, you know, that would, that would probably be the number two disappointment in the yeah. show yeah, I get overall that. is that, um, you know, I did, I wanted to get my labels for love charity out there and, yeah. um, it was nowhere discussed at all. It was edited right. out completely. Yeah. yeah. You got the name so and you all the reunion, know that, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Andy gave me a little shout out to say, you know, what I do and, 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 he basically apologized, I think. Yeah, like saying, that's right, nice. That's good. Because I know, I know that was what you, you know, why you did this and, and tell us about it, basically. Um, uh, that and also, you know, the way that Lolly was portrayed. That was mm-hmm. number one. I mean, that was... And the whole thing. That, the whole thing was also just made up. So that's why I didn't even, I wasn't even going to like bring that up well, in this because it's like, it's just... Uh, yeah. Silly. Well, it was shameful. It was it was a shameful thing. And I have to say, last night, um, uh, Andy, now that he's a father of two, Andy did, there was a question about how um, being a father, is that, has that influenced you in how you work now? Mm-hmm. Like, in how you deal with your executive produ- producer hat? And he said that actually, he does have uh, now that he's a father, he does have um, a bit more concern towards the children that are being That's shown nice. in these shows now. And I looked over at Lolly. In fact, I felt I, I heard him sort of going into this. So I turned my camera on and I filmed him saying this. So I have the clip of it. Um, Great. And I looked over. I looked over to Lolly, and Lolly was like, "Okay, all right." <laughs> That that can that can maybe nice. slightly that heal was, a wound was, or something. Yeah, yeah, that's really nice. A little bit. A yeah, little bit. a little bit. Yeah, totally. At least at least he acknowledged it. Um, yeah, and, yeah, that's nice um, to hear. And that's good to know that he has a little bit more awareness more of that. Yeah, awareness of of kids and how they're being portrayed or edited. Totally. With, you know, with Lolly, it was complete editing. And and what what we didn't know, and the whole storyline with my closet lock. I thought that was like an innocent, fun anecdote. Basically, but then they tied it into the other stuff. That she's a thief, and right? No. And it's uh, th- those aren't even analogous it was, things. It right? was exactly. so ridiculous. Yeah, it's so yeah, ridiculous. It was so ridiculous, and 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 thankfully, you you can see how ridiculous it is. Yeah. at the end, you can. You know, it's yeah, yeah, it's, totally. 
because it, it would have been it would she, have been a cute giving her justice at the end yeah i think so too but it also yeah. it would have been a cute thing had he not brought that whole made up thing up but whatever yeah yeah yes. It yeah. would have been a cute thing that, you yeah. know, my, but then my it three daughters not. are actually, my three daughters are in my closet, not just my one. <laughs> right. Ex exactly. Exactly. Um, the other thing I was wondering about, Mary, is like, I think what was unusual about what happened with everything is like the show and the cast, I guess, by proxy became part of the national consciousness before we ever saw the show bec because of what happened. And that also has never really happened before either, you know, where it was like, you guys got thrust in this, into the spotlight prematurely, essentially. Mm -hmm. I'm curious what mm -hmm. that was like for you. Yeah. I mean, first of all, the Washington Post, the, uh, the gossip columnist, Roxanne Robert. Re reliable Amy source, Arthur, right? Reliable source. They were so horrible to us the whole time. Just. Um, you know, making us a joke basically mm -hmm. and asking, like asking the, the, the audience, who, who are these women? Like, what do they matter to DC basically? Um, it wasn't nice at all. And then, um, you know, there was a, there was a lot of controversy, of course, around the show, even airing, there was a right. lot of people that protested it were like, no, I'm not watching that garbage. Like so anyone DC. who would do that. Yeah. Um, I had, I had neighbors that weren't very nice to me mm -hmm. um, because of it. And, um, you know, it was something I had to just grow some thick skin and, yeah. and roll off my shoulders. But um, because I think, I think what we did was, was a, a great snapshot of DC and I think so too. Um, a, a nice time capsule. And I also um, think it brought, Bob, I think, it, I, also so think it, I also think it's really you know, I remember that time. I, I, I mean, I was a lot younger, obviously, but I remember that time like DC was changing because because Obama had just become president. All of a sudden there was like this big injection of like cool restaurants and pop culture moments and things that were happening yeah. and that had never happened before. So I think it was such a great thing in, in addition yeah. to being a spotlight on the city. But like, I just think it, it, it diversifies what DC can offer. And like, you, you know what I mean? Like, I thought that was a really yeah. kind of great aspect of it, too. Yeah, and I think that that's really well well highlighted in our uh, the energy the, yeah. the the new energy is is definitely felt in in our whole season. I think I definitely agree. Um, yeah. The the two part reunion. What do you remember from that? Because I feel like you guys oh, didn't get too much God. closure because it was just like people talking in circles the whole time. Um, what stands out to you from that? Oh my gosh, that that was one day by the way yeah that was an 18 hour day wow it was it, it that's was, wild it was torture it was torture because there was um you know we we at this point we refused to work with the salahis we refused to be in the same space with them and um linda insisted on security <laughs> queen love that <laughs> security um and that happened after our whole um, our whole debut uh, in New York with our when our show air first aired. We were on the Today Show. We were on um, uh, what's the show um, with Whoopi Goldberg? The, oh yeah, the View, the View, the View. Um, that was all five of you together. That was all five of us together. But Linda led our charge and said, "We will, we will, whatever press we're doing with them." We have to have security. We have to have someone who is security with us at all times. Mm. We're not dealing with those people. And that's what she would say. <laughs> I love that. I love that. It's so her. <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it was, it, it, you know, it was, a, it was a time. And it, you know, the, um, that whole press tour was just, a, first of all, I have to go back to your question, the reunion. Um, uh, the stylist that that dressed me for some reason I have no idea why I agreed to this woman just saying this is what you're wearing. <laughs> right. She gave me no choices. It was almost like because during the season we would have producers that would be in our closets helping us figure out what we were going to wear for our pickup interviews, and they wanted no white, no gray, no black, 
which, you know, was basically my whole entire closet. Yeah, right, right. So then you picked the one dress from like the special occasion that you had, right? Exactly. We had to go out and we had to go. Nobody was, no one was supplying us with wardrobe. We had to go out and buy stuff or borrow stuff like mm -hmm. packs or, you know, other department stores were lending us things, nice, nice clothes. But um, they, they, they would dictate basically like, okay. And then they would send us, they would send snapshots to New York, the, to the line producer. To get who approved. Managing to get approved. And sometimes we'd have to change it. She wasn't liking it or whatever. So I'd show up to the reunion, just like assuming there's going to be like several racks and racks. Of, yeah. You know, all, little black dress and these cool boots that, Oh God. I, I mean, I look like Elvira. <laughs> that about the reunion that I can't stand. But just the chaos of the day and the fact that one 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 of the firsts, we have a lot of firsts on our show. One of the firsts is that we had um, a spouse on the sofa join us. Right. That had never happened. And only one though, which was unfair. Right. But then they then then we wanted all the spouses that were there to come out. So all right. the men that were associated with us, that's how Kat had Charles's photo because he refused. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there was another. There yeah. was another. Yeah, we had a break, and then right. everyone came out so that the men could could all speak their piece. Chime in, yeah, yeah. chime in, um, and defend these people. Like, yeah, but 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 it was. People. I loved seeing Linda be like he's he gets to come out alone first. Like I, she she really put up a fight to that. I think she that was, was nice. She was she was mad. Yeah, she was not happy about it at all. It was breaking her boundaries of like, we're not working with these people. And, right. You know, we, we don't want to be in the same room with them. Anymore. Yeah, totally. In fact, in fact, our promotional pictures, um, she is photoshopped into our White House photo. She was in. She was not with us. So it was we, all four, all, all four of you together and then her separately. Yeah. We were in a green, we were in a green stage and um, green room thing and um, green screen. And she, we had to leave because they were coming in and we didn't want to cross paths with them. Wow. And this was after, after we wrapped. All those pictures were taken after we wrapped, but they photoshopped her in. She was in our picture. <laughs> I, I love these little tidbits, Mary. Um, <laughs> wow. Uh, so... How did you find out that season two wasn't going to happen? Was that when, when it aired and you knew that this is all kind of overshadowing it? Did you sense that? Or when did you really find that out? We didn't find out until we thought we were going to start filming. They kept us in the dark mm. until we thought, you know, because they gave us a, a window when they thought we'd probably pick back up. And um, they didn't let us know until like days before we thought we were going to start mm -hmm. again um and we had an idea that we weren't because we we hadn't been given any new contracts right even though our contracts were binding for i don't know seven years or something <laughs> wow ridiculous um and i mean we knew that we would be renegotiating contracts every season but um yeah it was they don't tell you a lot they, right. they kind of keep you in the dark well, there's so many levels of decision making too right. Yeah. yeah. So and, yeah, and, and I think and, there was a there. I think there was a, a serious internal lobby going on. Yeah. To, to bring us back. I mean, and Andy was a part Andy's, of that. Andy, Andy was heading it. Actually, he he yeah. thought it would be great. He said it. He said it. I mean, he's saying it now that he really thought it would it would have been great to go forward a couple yeah, more seasons. Totally. Do you, and the the FBI subpoena subpoenaing the tapes. That's obviously the reason that's given, and I think it makes sense. But was there any other reasoning that you were ever given or like sensed from that? Or do you think that was really that's what was the nail in the coffin? No, my sense with it is that um that there was at this at this point in time, Comcast had just acquired NBC Universal. So they were in that kind of shake down, shake up right. happening. And, um, and then I think that, that defending themselves, you know, Bravo had to defend themselves against the White House and Congress, <laughs> you 
with lawyers. So I'm sure that yeah. was very costly. Right. And I think it just basically um, and they attributed that to crumbled the show. financially. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think that they just put that in a big hall and threw it out the window. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I get that. Um, yeah. I'm curious how you reacted several years later when Real House has a Potomac premiered and because real house it's it obviously it's a different show but it's essentially yeah. in my mind being from that area it's a de facto real housewives of the dmv dc maryland virginia because they kind of live all over the yeah. around the yes. city but what did you think of that well it was interesting because um I, I mean it was a little off-putting at first because yeah. you know i felt like it was a diss moving us aside and having having another franchise that's here in this area. And I, and I, I sort of was um, thinking about why they were calling it Potomac. And my thought was, I feel like they were calling it Potomac because there's a river called the Potomac River, not necessarily Potomac, Maryland. Right. <laughs> so right. that's where I kind of gathered because not anyone lives in Potomac, Maryland that's on that show. Yeah. So, um, that's that was where my thinking went, but yeah, it was a little, it was a bit of a sting. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, I could say I, I, I when I when they first did it, I and I, and I love Potomac, but when they first did it, I kind of just viewed it as a way for them to sort of reboot DC without rebooting DC. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? That's sort of how yeah. it felt. And also, I believe um, so. I'm I've known a couple of those women, Sharice and Robin. Uh -huh. uh, for years, years prior to that. And I think that they were talking to them about casting into our show. And they, Got it. they, and didn't, they, read. they didn't get cast. Got so it. I think when they, when they, I think when those uh, ladies saw uh, how, how it went, they were interested. Right. And had their own agendas, whatever. It's, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just, a, it's just an alternate universe imagining that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It really, and you can't really get stuck on that obviously, but it's just, it's, it, yeah. it is interesting. And I think it speaks to the fact that the DC area does have so many, such a, such a great culture and so many women that would be great for, for these shows. And um, I don't know, yeah. I think it's, it's, they, they were really committed yeah. to, to having a show there, you know, and that's um, you guys were the, obviously like this like casualty of that, which sucks obviously, but um, yes. Yeah. Um, well, there's there's talk like you know everyone since it since it canceled, everyone is you know our our diehard fans were really upset and and fourteen years later, even you know about. before before Peacock you know dropped us down, people are like reboot. We want you on our TVs. We we want you back. Recap. Yeah. You know reboot reboot. And that's been the main message again is that you know a they're thrilled to see us back and available um, yeah and they brought um, back miami after 10 years they brought back miami after 10 years so i know i don't know well andy i think andy is kind of resigned um about the dc show i think yeah i think i think he's satisfied with the potomac show and, yeah and you know the fans love it yeah um, and so, you met karen last night know. right I did. I met Karen for the first time last night. She's fun. Yeah, yeah. really fun. And, you yeah. know, I'm, I think the other thing is in, that's interesting is that, like, you know, obviously, you know, the FBI subpoenas the tapes and it, it involves this investigation. That's why you guys couldn't continue. But in the years since, Teresa was investigated by the FBI. Yes. Erica Jane has, has had a huge legal battle. A lot, Wait, like, Teresa went to jail. Right. Exactly. She went to jail. <laughs> Jen Shaw Andy, was Andy mentioned that. Andy Jen mentioned Shaw was that arrested on, on camera and went to jail. <laughs> and, you know, it's sort of, it's almost in that same way. Like they learned how to navigate some of this because of the ordeal that your show went through. Yes. And again, that's another reason why I'm thinking about it. And I'm like, DC was ahead of its time for, for another reason. You know what yeah, I mean? For sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, and not to mention what it did for our, our um, national security. <laughs> oh, there we go. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, my God. They, 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 they tighten that house. ship. Yeah, they tighten, tighten <laughs> they tighten that ship. Oh, my gosh. Um, well, Mary, when was the last time you've spoken to everybody on your cast? When, when was the last time you've... you've... I, see, I see Linda all the time. Uh -huh. um, and we were together last night for Andy's yeah. uh, little Um Cat... Since the show um, 
has been airing again. Uh, Kat, Linda, and I have a, a WhatsApp chat that we get on regularly. We were Love it. trying to help each other get our social media, you know, ramped oh, up yeah. again. Because one of the things that um, that was missing from when we were- Was social at, media. Pro- prominent was social media. I mean, we had Twitter. Mm-hmm. So I ended up with like 20,000 Twitter followers, but Twitter wasn't, I mean, Twitter wasn't really what it is now. Right. Um, and Instagram didn't exist. And Facebook was kind of not, you know, the greatest right. platform for, for, you know, like social media. But yeah. Engaging. With I felt like way. Facebook was a more of a personal thing dealing with your friends and keeping yeah. up with people. It, had, it hadn't switched to being more public facing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So Instagram since, since uh, April 15th, which is when, when Peacock dropped us, um, dropped us in, uh, I've gotten 2000 more. That's amazing. Yeah, so people great. are watching, people are watching. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some things that I'm, de- I'm doing and, um, uh, during COVID when we were all in lockdown, trapped in our homes um i one of my passions is cooking so i i created the two years that we were all inside um i was here in southern maryland at my farm here in this beautiful kitchen and i created over 700 pieces of content for a cooking blog which i'm working on getting all organized and i love that uh, launched so um yeah, I'm doing all kinds of fun things. Yeah, that, that was my business. next question was what was yeah. what how your life has evolved and changed since the show. What to tell me more? Oh, it's, it's evolved. It's evolved definitely. Um, well, you know, Rich and I got divorced, and that mm-hmm. was that was sad and unfortunate. But we've um, we've maintained um, a, a good, solid friendship and good. taking care of our kids and putting our kids' needs first. And now they're all grown adults. Um, Matt Amons is 26. And, wow. Um, Lolly is 38, going to wow. be 38 in August. Um, yeah, hard to believe. <laughs> wow, really um, wild. Yes, wild. Uh, and everyone's doing great. And um, I'm just focused on my design business. I have my interior design business, Miriam's Design. And I'm working on, um, I have, I've had a, a desire to create um, a documentary film on my grandfather's story. Um, as a pioneer of radio and television back in the 50s so i have that 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 i'm working on and um and i'm you know i'm traveling a lot and you know i i i'm i'm just focused on my family and my friends Mm -hmm. and enjoying this phase of life and it's really fun to be back in the public eye again for you know another blip (laughs) Uh huh. No, it's uh. I think it's really. Co- I I love it when people have their hands in so many different buckets and things. I think that makes yeah. it keeps life interesting. And for sure, it, it, you're one of those people that can really do a lot. And why not yeah. do a lot? You know, just yeah. uh, it's yeah. that's so awesome. But it's it's um my my passion is design and cooking. So yeah, I'm I'm, I'm working on um putting some content out that I think will be interesting and maybe a, even my own show. I'd love do to it. have my own show sometime. Do it. Yeah. Yeah, I've been talking to some people about it who are interested. So. Good, good. We'll and Lolly, Lolly and I collaborate on a lot of things. She's um, she's a floral designer now. She has a, a floral business. In Fits DC right into what you do, yeah. And does yeah, and so we collaborate a lot on things. Um, and she's still painting, and um, we have our garden here at the farm, so she's back and forth here. That's and, amazing. Um, I don't have any grandkids. It's a nice yet. life. I hope to. It's <laughs> I a nice life. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Grand dogs that I love. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh my God. Uh uh. Well, I'm so this has been so um fruitful and nice and and just great to reflect on the whole experience, yeah. I hope. And um great to see that you're doing so well and just happy to have this yeah. show back in 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 the conversation. Last question, Mary, is just sort of what do you see the enduring legacy of Real Hostas of DC being? Well, hopefully we'll be about invited to BravoCon. I hear it's coming back. Would love that. Um, 2025. We've, we've never been included. Um, in fact, for a while, we weren't even on the website, on the Bravo TV website. That's um, crazy. They took us off. And so they've relaunched us and they put, it, they put us in the classic category, which I'm fine with. <laughs> yeah. Not a bad place to be. I'm fine with that term. <laughs> classic is classy. <laughs> Ex- there we which go. I- 
I'll, I'll take it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't, I, I, I think the ship has sailed as far as, you know, getting a reboot. Um, I think Andy's made that pretty clear. I'd love to be, I'd love to be um, on Andy's show sometime with, with Linda and Kat. we can giggle and reminisce about mm-hmm. it. Um, so hopefully they'll consider that. But um, I think it's, I think we're in the capsule, you know, we're in, we're in the vault that was just opened. And um, I was, we, we're honored, basically, we're honored to have our, our house live show be the only show in this vault that just opened of these, of these shows that, that they're bringing back. Mm-hmm. So that, that felt good too. Um, and also uh, just with what's going on with the franchise, it's a little, I know you were talking to Bryce, Bryce Sander recently in your podcast about this, about how we're sort of in a lull with, yeah. with seasons and cat recasting and all these things. So, um, and we were talking about this with Andy last night as well, that it was a perfect moment. I agree. To, to put us back and put us back in play. Because there was a craving for it. You know, yeah, there's a craving, but also there's a lull right now and sort of like, you know, a, a, a shift right now in right. the whole, in the yeah. whole franchise. So, so it's, it's not good. a bad time. I, it's not a bad time to consume a classic. You know, it's not a bad time to revisit yeah. that. It really isn't. Yeah. And, and, I, and a reminder and of where that. the shows came from. Yeah, totally. Yeah, for sure. And and a reminder of, of what was going on back then. You know, yeah. it was, it, it's, a, it's a time capsule. It's not just about going back and seeing 14 years ago drama. Right. It's basically, it's, 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 it's history captured. <laughs> it, it really, and I, I really believe that. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's these words, classic, yeah. iconic, epic. Those are my Boom. three words for <laughs> real houses in DC. And I'll yeah. take it. Yeah, there we I'd go. I'd much rather have that than, you know, 10 seasons of. Where you peter out. A lot of, yeah. And just where we peter out and it just gets ugly and mm-hmm. yeah. discombobulated and disconnected. And, yeah. you know, um, Linda and I made a, made a pact when we both decided to do this that no matter what, we would never let editors or any kind of anything interfere with our love and friendship for one another. Um, so I'm grateful that we didn't have to endure any of that. Listen, you guys, you guys endured a lot on that one season. So and, and you're still and you're still great friends. So that makes me so happy. I really does. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, Mary, wow. it's a great note to end on. Thank you so much. So generous with your time. I'm so glad we figured this out. And uh, again, just great connecting with you like this. It's really, really fun. Thank you. Seeing you too. And I hope to see you in person real soon back here in DC. And by the I way, I wanted to mention you looked stunning the other night in your. In oh, your at the Met. About, at the Met thing. The oh, Met my Gala. God. Thank oh my you. God, Surreal day. Gorgeous. Thank you yeah. so much. Oh, my God. That means the world. So oh, my God. It's so fun to see you. You too. Let's get together soon. Yes. I want to gab. 